Hello everybody, this is Tim here once again. <coughs> I decided I've done so many horror movie reviews. I figured I would jump into some comedies here. And I thought, you know what? I'm a big Jim Varney fan of the especially of the Ernest character. You know what? Fuck it. Do some comedies, you know, take a break on horror for a while. Uh when I get back to horror, I'll probably be doing reviews for the Leprechaun franchise. Uh <laughs> so Look forward to that unless you hate those movies, which I know a lot of people that do. <laughs> but um, we'll get, I'll get back to horror when I get to those films. But just to focus on comedy here, uh, on comedy here um, I decided to review all the Ernest films. Uh, with the first film here being Dr. Otto and the Riddle of the Gloom Bean, directed by John Cherry. Now this film is uh, uh, made on a low budget, but it's like a really quirky, fun, um, uh, I would say actually spoof movie because the comedy in it kind of remind, reminds me of like the comedy from movies like Naked Gun and stuff in a way. Um, not that that's bad or anything. I like Naked Gun. And, um, but um, yeah, just to start off, uh, this isn't really an earnest movie. This movie is really about Dr. Otto, the character of Dr. Otto, also played by Jim Varney, who Jim Varney fucking plays everybody in this movie just about it. <laughs> but um it's really about Dr. Otto, which uh, Ernest, the character Ernest, is only like a guest star in it, really. I guess this is when they first started out, and they didn't really know what to do with the character. This film isn't even, this film is a solo film. It's not even in continuity with the rest of the Ernest films. It's its own thing and its own movie. Uh, the Ernest character just kind of pops in here. This is before they really knew what kind of, I guess, style of com comedy to run with with that character and how the fuck to use that character and shit like that, I guess. But just to jump into this film here. It's a good movie. I like this movie. I like this movie a lot. And uh, I would love to buy this movie. I watched this movie online. This is a really good movie. i just go ahead and say it. Give this motherfucker three stars. Uh, this is a good movie. Jim Varney is funny as fuck in this movie. He steals this movie. He steals this show. He is so damn funny. Um, for anybody that thinks he can only play Ernest, watch this movie. He plays like multiple characters here. Uh, plus Dr. Otto, who I think is the funniest fuck character. He's, the character's like fucking deformed and he's got like a hand on his head. <laughs> and Jim Varney plays him so well and like, uh, he starts talking about how he's going to kill a bunch of people and he's like, maybe we'll even, uh, if we're lucky, get some innocent bystanders. <laughs> and every time he says something, he starts laughing like, ah, <laughs> or something like that. And I can't do it as good as him. I don't even want to try again, but it's funny as fuck and he sells it so well. This movie pretty much, if, it, if you just want to take away, like, just narrow it down to its basics, this movie is pretty much just a showcase film for him to, like, play multiple characters and do some fun shit. But, you know, I say, so fucking what? If it's fun and he's good, fuck it. If it's entertaining, I, I fucking enjoy it. So, you know, if it's entertaining, then so fucking what? If that's all it, if that's all it really is at its core. But uh, this film reminds me, like, a lot of Rocky Horror Picture Show. It just has, like, a whole cult film feel to it. And it's uh, got like a, the low budget feel to it, but it's like the fun, you know, cult film low budget feel to it. Not like the real shitty low budget feel that some movies have. But um, this film is just so much fun. Just to get in the plot here, you got you got the beginning of it. This scene wasn't in the theater release, I don't think, but on the VHS release, it's got like a, a fucking earnest at the beginning of it. <laughs> And uh, he's like got this changing uh, chamber. He's talking to Vern, of course. Uh, <laughs> anybody knows Ernest knows who the fuck Vern is, or not who the fuck he is, because we never see what he looks like. But um, he's talking about this changing chamber he's got. And this scene doesn't really make any sense, really, because Ernest is like a completely different character from Dr. Otto. But if you go by this scene, when Ernest gets into the changing chamber, he like transforms into Dr. Otto, where you get the idea that he does. But Dr. Otto has like a, his own complete backstory, so I can see why this scene wasn't in the theatrical release. Seems like they just put it in there so they could like add in some more screen time for the character of Ernest to kind of like get people to, uh, we'll keep that character like fresh in people's minds and put him out there, I guess. I'm, I guess. I don't know. But it's not really needed. It doesn't make much sense because the character of Ernest is a complete separate character in every other format I've ever seen than the character of Dr. Otto. But once again, this film is, like I've said, is pretty much a solo film. It has nothing to do with any of the other Ernest films. This is a film on its own. This film has a much darker tone than any of the other Ernest, uh, Ernest movies. Um, like the tone of this movie is like uh, much more, is like much more darker like humor than any of the Ernest films, which are all mostly lighthearted. Um, but uh, 
Let's jump into it here. So, uh, fucking uh, Ernest, I guess, basically gets turned into Dr. Otto. We got the credits playing, and then all at once, fucking Doctor, the character Dr. Otto starts singing uh, <laughs> during the credits, which I found well, I found funny and surprising. I'd seen this movie when I was a kid, and I remember well, tripping out on it when I was a kid, you know, thinking, what the fuck kind of movie is this? You know, a dude's got a fucking hand on his head. <laughs> but, uh, I've been wanting to see it forever since then. Watching it now as an adult and not being able to understand what kind of style and stuff they're going for, I love this film. I got a kick out of it. This is a good movie. It almost, uh, it's a good movie, a really good movie. That's why I give it three stars. But if it wasn't for a few, like, little nitpick things I have, I would almost classify this film as a, a great film, to be honest. I mean, in my opinion, for me, a great movie. It almost reaches, like, what my idea of, like, a great movie is in this well, kind of particular genre. But, um, this, um, so Dr. Otto wants, he's like fucking like messing up all the credit and stuff like that and like everything that has to do with currency and money and shit and everything, uh, on the planet. Um, he's got this thing called the gloom, uh, the gloom beam, which there's, uh, no, expl no explanation whatsoever how this thing works. It's just like a giant magnet, basically. Which I found that kind of funny, but there's no explanation for how it works, which I don't really, I don't have a problem with. If you're focusing on that, then you're you're not getting the style of this movie. This movie's just meant to be a dark, fun showcase for Jim Varney's talents, and that's pretty much it. Um, and well, a spoof movie, yeah. Uh, it's pretty much a spoof of like the science fiction genre, and um, there's this fucking hero of the movie, if you want to call him that. The character's name is Lance. This guy, I don't know this actor's name, but he had me fucking cracking up in the movie. Him along with Jim Varney just fucking had me in stitches, I just tell you. Because um, he's supposed to be the hero, but he's dumber than fuck. I mean, he's so fucking stupid, it's unbelievable. <laughs> and uh, basically what uh, Dr. Otto does is he uh, uh, tells this riddle like live on television, like this big fucking complicated riddle, and uh, people have to try to solve it, otherwise he's going to like uh, destroy all the fucking credit and everything and on the whole planet and like wipe out all the bank accounts and just fuck everything up destroy the whole system and what's funny is this movie kind of has like a satire like thing going with it too in its style um and its story like you get these uh banker guys and they're like fucking talking about dr otto and they're like this man has no respect for human life and he has no respect for the bottom line I thought that shit was funny, and uh, you also get where they're they're like talking to each other. These banker guys are, and they're like, uh, "This one goes, gentlemen, this could this could almost." He says something like, "This could be worse than the than uh lo than us losing the Super Bowl or or something like that." All of that was funny. Um, the character of Lance, he's so fucking funny. He's like supposed to be like a parody of like somebody who's like super patriotic or whatever. And he's like so hilarious. Like when he was born as a baby, it shows like a flashback when he was a baby. And they fucking, uh, his parents have him in their, in their arms. And he's like, uh, mother, father, I'm so proud to be your son. <laughs> that shit just fucking had me cracking up. And it's like Christmas Day and he get, he made his parents a present. And it's like a fucking toothpick model of the White House. That right there, man, that is fucking hilarious. To me, that is fucking hilarious. Uh, just this character is hilarious to me. And at every single age, not counting when he's a baby, he's played by the same fucking actor who's like, in his, I don't, I couldn't really tell, in his uh, fucking mid-40s or something, looks like it, or late 30s. But I just, I just found that hilarious. Um, but um, him and his sidekick... And what's so funny is that the character is not only stupid, but he's like an asshole too. His sidekick is a, is a woman, and he keeps like uh, degrading her all the time. And he's like, and she's like, uh, you gonna run to help this person? And he's like, uh, it's like, oh, that's, that's just, it's just like a woman or something like that. Like, uh, like you're always wanting to run out into the world and do your own thing, but not being able to, or something like that. And it's like he's not only a, he's not only stupid, but he's also an asshole. I just find that funny. Just find that hilarious. Uh, but um. So basically, he's trying to take out, beat Dr. Otto, you know, save the day or whatever. Um, so this is when you get Jim Varney doing, like, his fucking multiple character play here, where he, like, gets into this changing machine, transforms into the first character. It's like this fucking Australian uh, mercenary type guy. 
one thing here, this little running joke uh, kind of got annoying to me. Is like his, one of his uh, people who works for him, like all the people on Jim Varney's team are like all hot chicks, which I find funny. Except for like this fucking robot that has like a bucket for a head. But it's got like a smiley face for a face. And every now and then its face would like change. The smiley face would like to different expressions that I thought was kind of funny and, and neat. It's inventive. They, they, they do more inventive things here with the super low budget of this film than I've seen in fucking... Well, either of the Matrix sequels, <laughs> or at least better executed than either either of those two. But as those are reviews for another time. But uh, back to the film here. Um, so he's like this fucking Australian type guy, and uh, Lance and his uh, his sidekick like go out and go into the woods. Um, they're fucking in the woods, and he sees like these people training. Um, one another thing I had another problem I had with the movie is like the Lance character is he's almost too stupid sometimes, I think, to the point where he seems like he's no way this guy could actually function in at all. I mean, he's just too stupid for me sometimes. Like, these people are clearly training out in the woods to, to kill him, and he's, like, fucking uh, saying, uh, remember BB gun safety kids always hold the gun up for safety. And I'm like, what? I mean, it's humorous, but I'm like, man, are you how fucking stupid are you, seriously? He's like, he fucking sees uh, Jim Varney as like this Australian guy. Um, but yeah, one one thing I didn't like, uh, got on my nerves, was this running joke where like the Australian uh, character that Jim Varney's playing keeps fucking like saying stuff wrong or doesn't know what to say. And his like sidekick who works for him, he's like this hot chick, like keeps correcting him and telling him what he should say. That They did that like over and over and over and over. And that kind of got fucking annoying. But uh, one thing is, uh, this cracked me up to no end right here. Like this character Lance wants to f use a fucking phone, and they put it him, they put him uh, in this fucking like cage, and he's like, "This doesn't look like a phone booth." <laughs> like no fucking shit, man. But it's so hilarious. This dude's line delivery is. <laughs> Another thing you got to see Doctor Otto when he was a baby in the flashback, and it was just so funny. Like. <laughs> It was like Jim Varney's head, like, coming up from underneath a table, obviously. But it was, it was a low-budget effect, like, with a little baby body, like, with him attached to his big head, his normal head coming up from underneath the table, uh, like, attached to the, the fake body of the, like, the little baby body. But it had charm to it, and it was funny. It was fucking funny. Because they come bringing him in, like, with a potato sack. It's, like, the exact opposite of how Lance was born, like, uh... Like, he's, like, the perfect baby, and this person comes in with, the, like, him in, the, like, a fucking potato sack-looking thing, and she's like, uh, bad news, it lived. <laughs> Another thing that's really funny is, like, uh, on Christmas, um, uh, <laughs> fucking, um, uh, Dr. Otto, like, kills his family, blows them up, and gives them a fucking present that causes them to, uh, the whole place, their whole house to fucking explode. I thought that was hilarious. I loved that. That was so fucking funny. Um... Once again, this movie is funny, and it seems, like, intelligently written as well. Um, but, um, back to what I was saying, uh, he's like, this ain't a, this ain't a, this doesn't look like a phone booth. And what's funny is there's a skeleton there, and the woman who's uh, been with him the entire time, who's helping him, she fucking looks over there, and she's like, uh, I'm looking in the, she's searching the skeleton, and she's like, I'm trying to find something that uh, will help us. And he's like, well, what are, uh, Whatever you find, it sure didn't help them. Or does it look like it helped them? <laughs> this is just funny dialogue like that. It's like, I can laugh at just dialogue alone in a comedy if it's written, you know, well and delivered by actors with charisma who, you know, are just naturally funny or just talented enough to pretend to be funny on the screen. But, um, I love that. Well, they made the... <laughs> Fucking, uh, so Dr. Otto takes him out of there. He lets him out of the cage. Um, he gets him in there. And one, uh, now this is Jim Varney still in his Australian character. And one thing uh, I find really hilarious here is they're playing like Russian roulette. And fucking, uh, the girl gets ready to shoot herself. And Lance grabs the gun and says, You always get to go first. <laughs> Even, uh, all, at the restaurants, you always get to order first. And he's like, I'm gonna go first this time. <laughs> he wants to fucking be the first one to play, to shoot first in Russian roulette. I just found that hilarious. But one thing leads to another. They managed to get out of there. I'm not going to go in too deep with the plot of this movie and the whole story. Um, or at least I don't want to because this movie is just a lot of fun. And creative for its really low budget. But uh, one thing leads to another. 
eventually, of course, you get like the next Jim Varney character where he wants to fuck with him, fuck with him again. It's basically just goes from one character to the next with Jim Varney fucking with him over and over. You know, character one, character two, character three, so on and so forth. Next person is like a fucking pirate, <laughs> and uh, they got uh, they got like this chick tied up, and uh, Lance comes over and he thinks it's like a sorority stunt, I believe. <laughs> Another fucking funny line. I like that. And uh, so they end up tying him up. Going to like sacrifice him to this thing called the fucking dump or something like that. But it comes out. And this is one thing I thought was kind of stupid. I didn't really like this joke. Where he's like, come to find out Lance was like friends with the dump. Uh, uh, I thought that was kind of stupid. Just seemed to come out of nowhere. Just like a what, something thrown in just so they could um, get out of this you know scenario and move on to the next one. So he's he turns out he was friends with the dump creature and it like unties him, um, and then basically that's it really. And then one uh, one thing that slightly redeems it though is he's talking to the dump creature and it's like he's telling it part of the riddle. And fucking uh, one of the things is is talking about like uh, the north uh, Santa, where Santa Claus lives or something like that. And the obvious answer is like the North Pole and the he's like reading it to the dump creature the riddle and the creature's like I think it uh, I think it's the North North Pole or something like that and Fucking, he's like, uh, he's like, yes, I had, I had the exact same idea. Oh, another thing funny is like in the riddle, it talks about something that has a, uh, like one eye or no eyes that can't see, and he keeps thinking it's Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> Lance is the character. Lance keeps thinking it's Mr. Potato Head. I thought that was hilarious. That was so funny. Um, but then you get on, you get on to the to the next character, uh, obviously. Um, and you know, the next character after that, over and over, but, um, <laughs> one fucking thing I thought was absolutely a lot, uh, one, well, before I get to that, I'm gonna say, this right here annoyed the shit out of me, when Dr. Otto sets a trap for, for the character Lance, and he's got, like, one of his workers, like, pretending to be, uh, like, something's wrong with her, and, like, she's gonna get hurt, and Lance has to save her, and she keeps, like, looking at the camera, saying, uh, like, breaking the fourth wall, like, over and over, saying stuff like, um, but this is my life. This is what happens to me. I should have been a nurse or whatever. And that kind of shit got annoying after a while. Too much fourth wall break. It's bullshit right there for me. Um, overdone joke. But um, so but he does manage to save her. Um, and then this next, this next, I love this next part where fucking Doctor Otto transforms into this, <laughs> this fucking like chick. Do you see Ernest dressed up as her like all the time in the Ernest films? Um, but, uh, he walks out there, he's, like, as this old lady, I think her name, I think the character's name he transforms into is, like, Aunt, uh, N Nadilia or something like that. Um, but, uh, either way, name or no name, the character's still funny as fuck, regardless of whether I remember the name or not. But, uh, the, he's, the old, uh, he's transformed to the old lady, and the character walks up there, and she's, like, uh, talking to her plant, and she's, like, giving it some water, and fucking, like, floods it with the water, and, like, kills the plant, like, one second, and it's like, hope you're happy, but uh, something like, um, plants in, uh, China don't even get water, I thought that was funny, that was funny as fuck, he gets him in there, and, uh, he keeps talking about, he keeps talking about his son, who he had, called Jaime, who fucking, like, died, who died, uh, and he keeps wanting them to, and the fucking, like, uh, Jim Varney, like, there's, like, this something in the refrigerator, and he all at once, like, grabs a pistol and shoots the refrigerator all the fuck and kills whatever it was in the refrigerator. I love that. That was so funny. Uh, and the robots there, like, the one with the, the fucking robot with the bucket on its head with the smiley face, except now it's a waiter, so it has a fucking mustache on its smiley face. Just little touches like that I find so funny. Uh, and they're serving them all food and everything. Of course, Lance is a total fucking moron and drinks the wine without thinking, not thinking whatsoever that it could be a trap. Um, so he drinks the wine, he fucking, everybody, of course, they all fucking pass out, and, uh, you get this hilarious fucking scene, uh, but it's also something, some stupid shit at the same time, where they talk about how they're gonna, like, feed them to, like, a fucking army of zombies they're making or something, I'm like, what, where the fuck did that come from, but whatever, but, uh, one thing is funny is Lance, uh, the character Lance goes, well, it's a good, it's, it's a good thing I signed my, uh, organ donor card, I am an organ donor, and I, I thought that was funny, um, but, uh, he convinces, like, uh, one of the people who's working with Jim Varney, one of the hot chicks, to help him, and she fucking throws this random, like, teleportation blanket on top of him that just came out of nowhere, but once again, if you're focusing on too much on stuff like that, it'll drive you crazy, but this is, you know, 
who gives a fuck about science in this movie, really, seriously? This is the Jim Varney fucking comedy hour is what this movie basically is. The fun Jim Varney comedy hour setting the stage for a shitload of fucking Irish movies. Uh, Ten, if you count this one. <laughs> but, um... So they get teleported, and then uh, you get another fucking Jim Varney transformation where he turns into, like, this really rich, sophisticated guy, and you get fucking funny one-liners where he's, like, talking about, uh, there are other rich people in the world besides me. I know. I gave them all their, I gave them, I'm the one that gave them all their money. Shit like that. Like I said, good dialogue like that. I just find funny. And maybe it's just because Jim Varney says it, and his delivery is good, and he's got really char good charisma, and he's always had an amazing likability factor to him. Even in the lesser Ernest movies, the one that aren't as good, uh, he's, the movies are still watchable at the very least, regardless of how bad they are, because he's so likable. But, um, fucking, he's like this rich, sophisticated guy, and, uh, he keeps fucking laughing, like, over and over. He starts chasing after him with his cane that can fucking shoot lasers out, and the lasers remind me of, like, the lasers from the ending of Rocky Horror Picture Show, like, the way they look and the way they're animated. But, um... He fucking, like, uh, the character Lance, like, wants a, wanted to be in the Senate, but didn't get to. And then, uh, fucking Jim Varney's, like, hollering out, uh, my, I bought me a seat in the Senate, Lance. I, shit like that, I just, I just find funny. Stuff like that, I find hilarious. But, uh, he's chasing after him, and he keeps fucking laughing, like, over and over, and he keeps laughing that same laugh. At first, it was a little annoying to me, but then he kept doing it over and over, and I, I just... Couldn't help but fucking laugh. He's like, <laughs> something. I, I can't do it right exactly, but the way he does it just made me fucking laugh. But um, so he manages to eventually capture him. And they, uh, one of the weak things about this movie is you get, I believe, like some scenes look like they're used twice because they're on such a low budget, and some of the editings like are really quick. This is John Cherry's first film. I believe, and some of the editing scenes are, like, really fucking quick, and almost, like, music video style type cuts, and those are annoying as fuck, I, those got old quick, but, John, uh, fucking Jim Varney, and the guy that plays Lance, more than make up for that shit, um, and just the fun of the movie, and then, so, it's finally, pretty much the ending showdown, and then the fucking robot fights the girl, and uh, he's, like, supposed to be impervious to harm, and she, like, kicks him in the nuts, and his fucking smiley face face changes to, like, a face like this, like, oh, <laughs> I just thought that was so fucking funny. Sorry, yes, I had to do my impression of it, but that I just thought that was so fucking funny, just, just the way this smiley face keeps changing. Uh, I find that shit hilarious. And so, uh, Lance is gonna fight Dr. Otto, and then all at once, for no reason whatsoever, all these other, like, all the other versions of Jim Varney appear, and he has to fucking evade them all, which I'm thinking, where the fuck did all these, how these, all the, how are all these other versions even able to be here? I mean, weren't they just, like, people he changed into? How are they able to all exist at once? But, you know, what the fuck ever, but, like, the, the old woman character that Jim Varney changes into, like, she fucking looks at him and says, young man, can you help me? help me they're gonna turn me into their love slave and he fucking like he's like oh, i'll save you ma'am and she just like knocks his brains out from the <laughs> hits him in the back of the head and she's like uh she says lines like a uh, just like jaime <laughs> oh man that just cracks me up jim varney just fucking cracks me up in this movie but um if it had been probably if it had been a lesser actor in this movie other than him or at least a lesser one with the like it wouldn't that didn't have the likability in the the comic style of him that fit this movie so well. I probably wouldn't have liked this movie as much. But, um, and one other thing I find really funny <coughs> is that the fucking actual riddle that's in the movie really has no bearing on this film whatsoever. It has nothing to do, really, with stopping the gloom beam. But, uh, another thing I find hilarious here is that Lance gets to actually stop the gloom beam, and, uh, fuck, he's like, I must use all my knowledge I have learned and accumulated in my lifetime, and he's, like, looking at the two buttons, and one's, like, you know, obviously the one that shuts it down, the other one's the one that destroys everything, all the credit and bank accounts and everything everywhere, uh, and he's, like, one potato, two potatoes, three potatoes, <laughs> I fucking love that, man, that was genius, but, uh, of course, he presses the, he actually presses the wrong one, and fucking the machine does go off and destroys everything, and Dr. Otto fucking gets away, and then what's, one thing I didn't like, is like the whole fucking like Dr. Otto's base completely fucking explodes, man. I mean it just blows all the shit. 
But another thing I didn't like is because it's a spoof movie. Uh, the characters just show up in the next scene. Uh, Lance and his uh, sidekick uh, both show up in the next scene perfectly unharmed and absolutely fine because this is pretty much kind of like a cult spoof movie almost, I would say, if you want to characterize it or uh, or categorize it, I mean. But um, like in spoof movies, like even, you know, Neck and Gun, like, Frank Drebin, the character that Leslie Neeson plays, who I, who I love, is pretty much invincible. I mean, he cannot be hurt. And in here, it's the same thing with these characters. They're pretty much invincible. But uh, I, that kind of still annoys me, even in the Neck and Gun movies. Like, the whole entire place explodes. The next scene, they're all absolutely fine. But now Dr. Otto is, like, at, actually at the cast station. He's, like, transformed back into Ernest. Uh, once again, the whole him being Ernest thing doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But this movie is a standalone film. But uh, he's transformed back into Ernest. And fucking, um, they're, they're getting gas, and, uh, and then, uh, they, like, get rid of, the, they can't get no gas, cause, you know, there's no money, cause everything's been fucking destroyed, thanks to, thanks to Lance for fucking up, that's what I find really hilarious, and he's not really a hero at all, he doesn't know anything, and he fucking destroys everything, and pretty much, uh, kills civilization in a way, <laughs> I find that hilarious. So he's like, they're just pushing the car out of there. And then uh, Ernest takes off his hat, and he's got the Dr. Otto hand on his head. And he like he looks at the camera and says, know what I mean? And that's the end of the movie, pretty much. And, and I like that ending. It's a little fun little thing there. And the robot's also there at the gas station with Ernest and fucking, uh, or Dr. Otto, whichever you want to call him. The robot's also there, and so is the one of the one another one of the hot chicks who works for Dr. Otto. I uh, found that, uh, just that ending funny. But, um, so, I, yeah, all in all, other than the, the gripes I had with the, the cuts and everything and some uh, some low-budget scenes where they had, it seems like they had to reuse the same shots, uh, I would give this film solid, solid three out of a possible four. This, uh, this, this is, you know, any sign of the quality to come. Some of these Ernest films I haven't seen in fucking forever, but I, I'm, I've always been an Ernest fan and a Jim Varney fan. Um, but if this is any sign of the quality, you know, to come, this is a great start for this franchise, even though this isn't an earnest film, it's not. One other thing I forgot to mention, you get this really funny flashback, where it's like the fucking science fair, and, uh, it's like Dr. Otto's science fair, and Lance creates, like, I believe the first voting booth, and, uh, even though fucking Dr. Otto's got a advanced, you know, talking robot, uh, the voting booth is still more amazing, I guess. I found that hilarious. And the robot fucking goes on a rampage. <laughs> like, Jim Varney sends it on a rampage at the science fair, and it's, like, destroying everybody's stuff. And, uh, the character Lance the whole time is saying, like, goofy shit. Like, I just found hilarious. Like, uh, look, he has no respect. Uh, look, Dr. Otto can't win the science fair. He has no respect for others. Look what he's doing to, look what he's doing to her project. <laughs> I just found shit like that hilarious. But, yeah, this is a solid three-star film up a possible four i highly recommend this film to people who just who who like cult films like rocky horror picture show i think this fits into that kind of category really well uh it's not as good as rocky horror picture show but it's still a good movie and really fun and if you're a fan of jim varney i definitely fucking recommend you check this out so i'll see you guys again with Ernest goes to the camp even though the Ernest films basically have no continuity with each other i will, I will review them in the order that they came out so, I really like this film, and I enjoy it, and I'll see you guys again when Ernest goes to the camp to hopefully I'll enjoy it just as much.